We are going to go to space this week, Brian. How's that sound to you? Sounds great. <laughs> I know that uh, as a young child, I'm so much older than the rest of you, probably. Some of you maybe in the audience are pushing the kind of years I am, but I uh, can remember when my dad got a 45 uh, record, brought that home. He had always had the best stereo in the neighborhood. We opened up all the windows and all the doors, and we put that 45 on, and it was a, a 45 that had the sound of that very first uh, 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 Sputnik, not Sp well, it wasn't Sputnik. What was ours called? Uh, um, <clears throat> when the Mercury rockets before the Mercury rockets, um, the very Pathfinder? first satellite that we put into space. After I can't Sputnik. remember. Sorry. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, but it was just the sound. It was uh, that was the, the record. Ping. Yeah. The sound of the of the rockets taking off. Oh, okay. And right. he turned the stereo all the way up, and it was shaking the windows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so that was, I think, in 1957 or 1958. Right yeah. for Sputnik. We've come a long way in space since then, but Elon Musk has been pretty sad that we have not come as fast as he would like us to. So there's a lot going on right now in the space world. And Brian Wong, I'm going to turn the, the mic over to you. Okay. Okay, here we go. So everyone knows about SpaceX we've been discussing and the super heavy Starship, which um, probably will be launched to orbit, uh, I think, um, this month in February. I think that they, the third launch will go to orbit. And um, I think it'll be successful because the previous one went quite high. And then it, because they dumped the liquid oxygen and that caught fire, that had a problem with getting to orbit. So I think <clears throat> I'm, we'll make a bet that we're going to get to <laughs> orbit this time with the Super Heavy Starship. But we have like four more ready to go right behind that. Um, and there's a lot of other things that have to happen for, for NASA. So as we've said before, um, SpaceX is, is mass producing, planning to mass produce the Starlinks. Elon's talking about making 100 per year, maybe um, 300 per year going to Mars. So there was a, um, a scientist researcher who, who works on the various uh, NASA Mars rover missions. And he's done some new calculations about about how to heat up Mars by 10 degrees Celsius, about like 16 degrees Fahrenheit um, by as early as 2050. That if we get these issues getting to orbit, making a bunch of starship, making the factory, we can start our first missions to Mars in some volume by 2030. Could be 2028, could be 2032. Let's just say it's 2030. His plan is to make you know, use about 14 full payloads. Um, and you may need another 14 or, or so to, to add in the power. So still about 30. So again, not as much as even one year of production that uh, Elon's talking about, where he gets to 100 per year. So and he would put in nano rods and nano rod factories into these ships. So the first three are scooper trucks and factory one. So basically mining as well as a factory for these nano rods and then factory two and three, a power source, um, two or three power sources, eight power sources, and then five, four factories. So then, um, he would begin, um, um, releasing things. So he had a timeline of a few years, total timeline about, about like 10 ish years. So if things take until 2035 to get really get going, to have the factory set up and then to release the material over 10 years, that will increase the temperature on the surface of Mars by 10 degrees Celsius. So up from about like minus 68 Celsius or minus um, 100 Fahrenheit, and then move it up by, you know, almost 18 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius to minus 58. If you get it up there, then the uh, CO2 can start, uh, uh, ice, dry ice CO2 is on the poles. That could start, um, you know, um, melting, subliminating, uh, getting into the air and start creating some chain reaction stuff. Um, so we'll go into more details on his plan 
over there. Okay, so so the the plan then uh, is not to make it so that you could go out and get a suntan while you're on Mars. This has to do more with uh, stimulating some other kinds of changes on the surface of Mars that might be beneficial. Right. It's basically what we fear could happen here, where the warming that we didn't want would, say, melt the polar ice caps uh -huh. and then cr raise the water on Earth. Right. We want to melt the ice caps on Mars. I see. We want the CO2 to melt. The frozen water in there is enough to get um, Martian oceans and lakes, right? Oh. So if we make the CO2 ice caps melt, then we get more CO2 gas warming. And we know it's too much CO2 to be warming on Earth. We want that to happen on Mars. We want it to go to, if we get a chain reaction to happen, we can raise the temperature up to like zero degrees or something like that. Um, so then you're getting, you know, just a, a coat instead of a, you know, two hundred thousand uh, dollars space suit. Right. I can just have a coat, and I can have a little air mask. Right. Right. And I'm, I'm, it's like I'm. Um, the analysis would be like um, walking around on Everest. You know, if I'm at minus forty, it's like I'm at the top of Everest, right? Right. And I have to have this this gear, oxygen tank, and stuff like that. As I come down the mountain, then I get less and less stuff, and it gets more normal. If I get to base camp, yeah, you know, I can just have my coat. I don't have a breather. You know, I can just hang around. It, it may be difficult to breathe because it's like Kenya, high altitude, thin air, right? But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of okay. I want have air in this situation, sure. right? That involves a more other process to get the oxygen involved. But raising the temperature up to, you know, even T-shirt mm -hmm. weather uh, mm -hmm. is, is in theory possible. Oh, I see. Um, I see. Enough of this chain reaction could do it. Huh? So, what is, so also for those of us who are not scientists, what is a nano rod? Nano rods are carbon that are, um, you know, there's carbon nanotubes. There's um, there's graphene. There's graphite. You know, sheets of carbon. So carbon is among the most vertical thing, versatile things. Like we are made of a lot of carbon, right? right. And then all the miracle nanotechnology things, a lot of them are carbon. Like also, if you make it right formation, you have diamond, right? Uh, yeah. Diamond's carbon, right? right. So nano rods are kind of like short carbon nanotubes, right? So I have um, like rice grain kind of carbon nanotubes, mm. but you know, like short, you know, little bits of hair. Mm. That's, that's be a nano rod. Mm. Okay. Um, so then he, he talks about making nano rods. If you, if you, if I burn charcoal or something like that, then you got a lot of little bits of flaking pollution, right? Mm. If I make it burn the right way, then it burns up into, instead of this little particles, clumps of, of carbon. Basically, I'm making the right kind of pollution. I see. Right? And so I want it to be rods, you know, shaped. Right. So making the nano rods is with a, you know, a vacuum metalizer that can get for 200K on Alibaba. Hmm. Right. So hmm. going to the, the China industrial e-commerce site and I guess to order it. And it would be not dissimilar from you know having sheets of this of, of some kind of carbon material, rolling it out and then having that um you know reacted to, right? Yeah. So so it's you know, roll the vacuum chamber. It is not like a gigafactory with you know. 10,000 robots, you know, mm -hmm. super complicated making cars. I'm just <clears throat> am making the right kind of sheets and material, chunking it up and then ha making bits of it to, right. to do. So it's, it's a, a very, very simple fabrication, right? Okay. Cheap. So I take the soil, I have to mine it, I make metal, and then I turn the metal into rods with a vapor deposition. So I kind of like have a little chamber and then have the, the, the thing turned into a, um, a little mist of mm -hmm. stuff. And then mm -hmm. it settles down. And then um, and then I later release it, you know, kind of like flip it up into the into the air off of the off the sheets. So um, I, I don't have the full details on the right. sure. construction process, but it's um, basically the description is it's it's inexpensive. It does involve a fair bit of power. Um, but it's like 
having a um a slightly more complicated um furnace thing and it, it, not much more than this um of what you're seeing there in terms of like the roll and vacuum chamber not yeah. a bunch of equipment so then um they also have a method for um doing the um the mining the surface mining of getting the carbon they want so mm. they find the right spot and then they have pulleys um at the two ends and they're doing a little scraper so basically just a slightly more um more complicated than having a shovel and just you know a bulldozer and they're scooping it up right because you're just choosing to do it with pulleys and stuff and you're gonna have it onto a conveyor belt mm -hmm. and go in there so again not um complicated it doesn't involve a lot of heavy equipment being brought over right, right. using cables and pulleys and, and stuff like that so so you need to um want to get to photosynthesis Synthesis, you want to get to greenhouse gases. So previously, before before we get the SpaceX Starship going, um, we're landing one-ton missions onto Mars. Like the, the rovers that are going around there. Right. They're, they're one-ton max, right? So you launch up there with, you know, a Delta rocket or a Falcon 9, and they have stages. So I, I launched 20 tons, but then I have to have, you know, 90% of it is another booster another stage to launch my two-ton ship my right. one-ton ship to get to mars right so with starship they can refuel in orbit and then launch the full 100 tons maybe 200 tons to mars right, right. so then the amount of material goes up by 100 times for each mission going to mars and then the the factory method that he's talking about is about 10,000 times better than previous designs mm. to get um the previous designs were to get um super greenhouse gases so you know all the um the fluorocarbon stuff that they were trying to ban from your air conditioner yes 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 we want that i see or something or something better than that and they're saying that this carbon rod aerosol will be 10 times a time better than that so instead of mm. needing um a billion tons maybe i, I only need 10 million tons uh -huh, uh -huh. in the air, right? right? But the equipment to make that 10 million tons is the mining and the, the equipment right. is only only a thousand tons. Right. Right. So so then you make the, the conductive nanorods so the, the rads, the little pollution bits are um can conduct electricity as well. And I'm gonna make them at a rate of three liters per second, right? And then I want to, um, uh, you know, do other changes to enable photosynthesis on the planet. So I want to, to add nitrogen. I want to add some other things to the soil so I can grow stuff. Because I want to cause the chain reaction of the of the ice caps, CO2, carbon dioxide ice caps, dry ice to melt in the poles mm -hmm. to increase the warming. Mm -hmm. And then I want to do stuff to the soil to make it so I can grow stuff, mm -hmm. right? Because then I can add bacteria plankton plant things stuff that can grow at, at cold temperature like the tundra of russia siberia right and then i can then create my own ecosystem got it because i want to get to oxygen eventually right so um so they have their temperature at mars right now that minus 70 it's it's in kelvin because we're they're scientists right right um and so the temperature there on the left and then you add these rods in and then you can get to um, 20 um, milligrams per square meter. And then I get that 10 degrees of boost. If I get to double that 40, because um, um, it gives a logarithmic scale, right? Okay. So basically I need to go up 5X to get to like 100 milligrams per cubic meter to get up to that red line of nearly 230. So then I've increased the temperature by 25 degrees Celsius, right? And then if I get to in between the 100 to 1000, say 500 milligrams, so I got my density up by 25 times, right? Then I've gotten it up to 260, which is about like minus 10 or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. right? So that is that t-shirt weather. Right? And you get 20 times as five as much. So the 14 or so ish starships 
get me in 10 years to to 210. And then if I up that by 25 times, I get up to near the t-shirt level. But if it took me 10 years after everything's kind of up and running right. to get to get to the 10 degree increase, if not, I can just ramp up more stuff and get the sure. temperature to increase that much faster uh -huh. because what I'm doing is I'm trapping the weak sunlight, 40% less than right. uh, 60 percent less than Earth, 40% percent how much Earth, to <clears throat> capture and warm things up. Sure. So the sun will only warm up so much. I'm just like keeping and trapping everything, seeing right. having it reflect away. I'm just keeping right. it all. Um, but it's it's techno technological level of only 14 to 30 starships for this part, and then what 300, you know, 500 to get to the other part. Uh, 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 the, the 25 attempt density just run bigger factories and do more stuff. It is a, you know, because we're talking about three liters per second in the first phase to get 10 degrees. If I get 75 liters per second, it's not, it's like, yes, it's a fire hose of stuff, but it's like not that big a deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And it's like I'm changing the entire planet. Right. And the other thing would be that I could do it, make a dome, capture gases. And then I could have something that's a mile across, you know, with the temperature that I want. I can up the density in one right. localized area. Right. So it gets to far more, you know, I don't have to, again, make some super insulated thing to last in minus 70. I, not like some Antarctic outpost. Yes, yes, right? yes. I'm doing far less to get there. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so, any other questions? That's basically nope, summarizes. No, nope, that, that makes picture. that that was reasonably easy to follow, Brian. Okay, great. <laughs> very, very, very interesting. And uh, so, for those of you who are new and you haven't subscribed yet, you know what to do: hit the like button too. That'd be great. And uh, we will continue to put these out about once a week. Although it looks like our run rates popping up just a little bit right now. And uh, Brian, until uh, next time. Uh, it's been great uh, listening to all of this interesting stuff about war. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> all right. And we'll see you guys next time.